After successfully powering up and connecting to our ShopBot, we can begin operating, designing, and cutting. First, if we have not already selected the default settings for the tool, we can load them now. Right click on the ShopBot 3 icon and select Run as Administrator. Now, in the ShopBot 3 command console, go to Utilities, Reset Default Settings. Click to confirm the next two prompts. The following prompt will have us select the type of tool we are running. Double click to open the PRS ShopBots folder. Then select and open the ShopBot PRS desktop settings file for your model of tool. While creating our surfacing files, let's warm up the spindle. Before beginning the cutting operations for the day, we always want to warm up the spindle. This operation will run the spindle for about 9 minutes to get the bearing grease up to temperature. First, set the VFD to around 200 Hz, which is equivalent to 12,000 RPMs. Every 100 Hz is equal to 6,000 RPMs. Now over to the ShopBot 3 software to run the routine. We can do this from the Cuts dropdown in the command console. Select C5, Spindle Warm-Up Routine, or type C5 into the command bar. A prompt will appear saying now starting router or spindle. Click OK on the prompt and the spindle will run until the warm-up routine completes. Now to create the surfacing file, we can do this on a different PC while the spindle warms up, or on the ShopBot PC after the warm-up routine is finished. From the ShopBot 3 command console, select Tools, Tabletop Surfacer, or type T U in the command bar. A new window will appear titled Tabletop Surfacer, where we need to confirm the settings for our surfacing file to be cut. The first two fields are for the table size. For this 24 inch by 18 inch tool, I will keep the 24 inch X and 18 inch Y dimensions. The bit I am using is the Onsrud one and a quarter inch spoil board cutter, so my entered bit diameter will be 1.25. Depth of cut is negative 0.03 inches to make our board flat, and overlap is set to 15%. These settings are all fine for this application. Now click the Make My Surfacing File button to preview and save out this file. The prompt Create File appears, and we'll need to select a name and location for the surfacing file. Click Yes, then type Surface Top as the name, and select the desktop as the save location. Then click Save. The preview window will appear with the toolpath displayed. If the preview looks off, open and pin the Materials tab and confirm the job setup settings are accurate. Do the same with the toolpath tab. All looks good on this setup. Now the file is created and saved, but I am going to quickly cover the same process in vCarve or Aspire. Click to open vCarve or Aspire, then click create a new file. Set up and verify the job settings. For the 24 by 18 desktop, this would be the setup. The job type is single sided and is a 24 inch by 18 inch by half inch piece of material on our deck. The Z0 position is the material surface. The XY datum position is where the 00 location is set up. Click OK and the job is created. Now to create the vector for our surfacing toolpath, click the draw rectangle icon and now to enter the parameters. The rectangle will be 24 and a half by 18 and a half inches. It is slightly oversized to ensure we cut all the way to the edge. I'll set up the anchor point for this vector at the center and a location of 12 inches by 9 inches. Click create and the vector will be saved. Now click Close in the Draw Rectangle screen. Click anywhere on the rectangle vector so it shows up as this pink dotted selection. 
head over to the Toolpath tab and select the Pocket Toolpath option. Here we see the Pocket Toolpath settings. For this flattening operation, our starting depth is zero, which is the top of the table. The cut depth should be how deep we need to go to flatten the top of the MDF spoil board. For this cut, it will be around 0.02 inches to 0.03 inches. Next, choose the bit. Click Select and the Tool Database window will open. Here we will see the preloaded settings for the ShopBot. We should find the 1 and a quarter inch spoil board cutter here under the Wood options. Left click to select the bit and review the settings. The defaults are all suitable for this operation. Diameter of 1 and a quarter inch. The pass depth is 0 0.08 inches, but we are only going down to 0 0.03 inches in our cut, so this is fine. The step over is set to 80%, leaving a 20% overlap, keeping this somewhere around the 15 to 20% overlap will keep tool marks at a minimum. The spindle speed is set here to 12,000 RPMs. However, on the desktop tools, the RPM is manually set by the dial on the VFD. So be sure to record what RPM we set here before running the file. The feed rate is set to 3 inches per second, and the plunge rate or Z speed is set to 1 inch per second. We have to work in the per second interval for the ShopBot to properly read the toolpath speeds. The tool number should be anywhere between 1 and 19, which are the numbers available for the primary cutting head on the ShopBot. Click OK to apply the tool parameters. Now to finish up the pocket toolpath options. Using a clearance tool to hog out material is not needed here. The cutting strategy, either offset or raster, will affect the cut. The offset strategy is a spiral starting in the center going out. The raster strategy is a staircase or ladder where the cut is done from side to side, moving up or down. For this flattening operation, we will use the offset strategy. Changing the strategy and direction can be important for different materials and cutting operations, especially if working with difficult wood grain. Now we can name the toolpath and click Calculate. After clicking Calculate, the software will create the toolpath, then will display a preview of the cut. In the preview, we see the material displayed as this beach-colored board. The cutting path is marked by the blue lines, and all movement above the material is marked by the red lines. We can preview the tooling by clicking Preview All Toolpaths, and we will see a brief demonstration of the toolpath being cut. The Preview tool is one of the most useful features in VCarve or Aspire. It allows us to almost exactly see what the final cut will be, and identify and fix errors before cutting any of our material. After reviewing the preview, confirming all looks correct, click Close to exit the preview. And in the Toolpass pane, select the Save Toolpass icon. First, review the settings. The option Save All Toolpass to One File is checked, but none of our toolpaths are checked to be saved. Click the Toolpass checkbox to select all toolpaths in the file. Now we see our pocket toolpath listed in the Toolpass to be Saved section. The post processor we select is the translator that will take the VCarve toolpath data and output a file that the CNC can use. For this, select the ShopBot TC inch or millimeter post processor, TC standing for tool change. We have output direct to machine unchecked. If you are on the same PC as the ShopBot, then this option will be available but we want it unchecked to save this toolpath out independently. Click Save Toolpath to File and a new window appears with a few options. First, we select a location to save to, as I currently have my USB drive plugged in for transferring the file, I am going to save to the USB location. I'll name the file Surface Top and click to save. Lastly, if we want to access this design in the future, we need to save one more file. 
go to the File Save As function from the drop down menu of vCarve or Aspire. We get the same File Save As window as before, but this time we are saving the design and not the toolpath. I have the USB drive selected and will name this Surface Top. Click Save. Now that the files are saved, close out of vCarve. To check the files we just saved, open a file folder and open the location we just saved to. In this case, I'll open the flash drive location. Here is the file location with the two files saved onto it. The SBP file is the ShopBot parts file and is the toolpath or cut file that we run on the ShopBot software. And the CRV file is the design file with the vectors and info for vCarve or Aspire. If we double click to open the CRV, we see vCarve open the design with the toolpath data also stored. This is not the file we run on the ShopBot. Before moving the tool around for the first time, we need to square the gantry. The desktop tools use two motors to drive the gantry, and it is possible for them to come out of square when not powered. Both the desktop and desktop max have a quick squaring routine that aligns these motors. To run the squaring routine, go to Cut Part and open your desktop or ShopBot parts file location where the squaring routine is saved. For the desktop tool, I will load the desktop squaring file. The routine will run the gantry all the way to the back and crash into the physical limits, squaring up the gantry in the process. For the next demonstration, I'm installing a V-bit as the center point of the bit will be very useful. Any bit coming to a point that is in the center of rotation of the spindle will work for this. Even a plotter pen could be used, but a bit like a straight cutter will not work. This process is very useful for when using a jig or performing a cut that may need a custom 00 location. It also can be done to ensure the rabbit is cut in the correct location as the spoil board could have shifted during shipping or when moving the tool. The rabbit being cut is an eighth of an inch around all sides cut with a quarter inch bit. I will measure and mark an eighth of an inch in from the edge of the board as zero zero. The measurements and marks I am making are very rudimentary. I'm only using a tape measure and pen to mark these locations. I'm doing this to show that even with these very basic techniques we will end up with an excellent result. Using more accurate measurement tools like calipers or even laser guides will improve the end result when precision in the thousands of the inch is needed. Once this point is marked on the board we want to move the center of the bit over the point and set it up as our home location. To do this First, open ShopBot 3 and go to the Tools dropdown and select ShopBot Setup, or type in TS into the command line. This will open the ShopBot Setup window. Click Next on the first and second screens, taking us to the Proc Switch Setup screen. On this page, we should see a Click Here to Make It Easy on Me button. Click on this button and a new window opens titled X and Y Axis Zeroing Setup. Then click the Run the Proc Switch Setup Routine button. A prompt will appear asking, do you want to use the keypad to move to your home position? If you already have the bit centered over the point, click No here. I will click Yes as we need to position the bit. Clicking Yes brings up the keypad. First, bring the bit close to the center of the point, not worrying about being extremely accurate for this step. Now that I'm close, set the keypad to Fixed Mode allowing us to move in a much finer increment. Click the Fixed button and a white fill-in box will open. The value in this box is the fixed distance we are setting the keypad to move. The value in this box is the fixed distance we are setting the keypad to move. I'll keep this at 0.01 inch and move the bit into the exact location we measured and marked out earlier. Once in position, close the keypad and we are asked zero your X and Y axis here. We want to check yes and set this location as zero. Once 
Once the zeroing routine runs and finishes, click to close the ShopBot setup window. It will then ask if we want to save our settings. Click yes and we can test out our new zeroing location. To test it out, I will run the C3 XY zeroing routine by clicking cuts C3 home XY axis using proximity switches. The routine will run and zero the Y axis followed by the X axis on the home switches. When finished, a tool is now zeroed and the X and Y message is displayed. Check that the bit is in the correct location over the marked point and we are all set up. If installing the dust foot, now is a good time to do it. I have pre-installed the hose clamp on the hole for the cutting head. With the hose port facing right, slide the foot over the cutting head. Then tighten up the hose clamp until the foot is held solidly. The bottom skirt is magnetic and easily drops away. The hose is slid directly over the inlet and stays loosely in place. Moving on to cut the rabbit, the cut requires a quarter inch straight bit. We will run it at 16,000 RPMs. I have this bit installed and will move the head over to where it is convenient to zero the z-axis. Before running the z-zero routine, be sure to test the plate and clip. Touching the two together will have input one light up. Now clip onto the collet or bit, then test the connection again by touching the plate to the bit. We see input one light up again, so I'll put the plate into position under the bit and run the C2 Z0 routine from the cuts drop down menu. The Z will slowly move down to touch off the plate. Hold the plate by hand to keep it steady and flat. It will touch off the plate twice, then indicate the Z is zeroed. Be sure to put the plate and clip away after it finishes. Zero the X and Y now if for some reason needed and check that your VFD RPM is set correctly. Mine is set to 250 Hertz, which is around 16,000 RPMs. Click Cut Part. Select and open the rabbit file for your tool. When the beige file load window opens, click the big green start button. Respond to the prompts confirming the correct bit is installed and zeroed, then click OK. The spindle will now spin up and the cut will start. The rabbit will finish in two passes and leave an eighth inch edge around the spoil board. Next, to run our table surfacing file, it is helpful to use a surfacing bit. Here I have the one and a quarter inch spoil board cutter. Remove the quarter inch cutter and swap the collet and bit out. I need the half inch collet for this bit. Snap the collet into the collet nut, then install the bit. The bit should be just under full depth in the collet by about one eighth of an inch for ideal grip on the bit. I will leave a link to the installing a bit in the spindle video in the description below. Next, to zero the bit in the Z, get out and test the clip and plate. Input 1 is responding correctly, so on to the collet nut. This also tests out correctly, so it is time to run the Z0 routine. Once the bit is zeroed, be sure to put the clip and plate away. Check the VFD setting as well. This should be between 12 and 18,000. I have it set to 16,000 again or 250 hertz for this cut. Then click cut part and select the table surfacing file we created. Click start when the beige fill in screen appears and respond to the prompt asking if the Z is zeroed. The tool will now move home, then click OK and the spindle will start and the tool will start the cut.
Once the surfacing file finishes, the spoil board is flat and the tool is now ready for normal cutting.